The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. I want to briefly talk on the topic given to me, the city church concept uh, as seen in Amsterdam City Church. Um, in fact, the Bible says in, in Titus chapter 2 that the grace of God has appeared to all people. The grace of God has appeared to all people. That which was concealed has now appeared to all people. And by God's grace, um, today we are seeing great miracles in Amsterdam City Church. Amen. And in Harbour City Church, and in Nijmegen City Church, and recently in Alkmaar City Church. Amen. 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 You know, the greatest miracle in this world, the greatest miracle ever seen, it is not that the lame walk, it is not that the blind see. It is not even that Lazarus came back from the grave. It is that a man passes from, from darkness to light. And it is that a man passes on. Yes, please. Awesome. Awesome. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so the Possessing the Nation uh, agenda has been very paramount in the city church. Um, on, the, on May 20, 2018, at the 43rd Council meeting of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Eric Nyamiche was elected the sixth chairman of the Church of Pentecost. And the profound words possessing the nations was echoed that day in his acceptance speech. It is these words that have birthed the city church. Amen. Amen. Now, the city church is not so much a new thing because our apostle's vision and, and his philosophy about possessing the nation is that which our Lord Jesus Christ himself started. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, our Lord Jesus Christ says that you, should, you, should, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you and you shall, be, uh, you shall go to Jerusalem, you shall go to Samaria, and you shall go to the ends of the, the, uh, the earth. Now, Jerusalem was a capital back then, um, which gives us a model that um, just as our, our Apostle Paul used to do, he would go to every city, he would go to Cyprus, he would go to Crete, and he would look for the synagogue to be able to, to find the Jews, as we learned yesterday. And when, he's, when he would find the Jews, um, he would preach to them. You see in the book of Acts that he would sometimes not be accepted and then he would move on to the Gentiles. Amen. Now, Jerusalem was for the Jews. However, Samaria typifies... Um, a different type of people a different group of people so when you look at the plan of God the model of God for his church you see that God is building a multinational multiracial multi-generational uh, God is building a multi-church amen amen and what we see in our church today is that God is bringing all sorts of people into his fold amen you want to clap for your hands for Jesus for that amen in fact, my time is quite short, but that if you may permit me, during the prayer of our apostle, I, I, I fell in tears. Because God revealed to me a great door. And I could see people from many nations coming in. And you could see that people that were wounded, people that were broken, people that were from different nationalities, people that were hurt, they would all be coming in. And they will be receiving salvation. You will see transformation. In fact, I could envision an arena like this. And you will see different types of people coming in and filling this place. I believe that God has chosen the church of Pentecost. Pentecost. And God is using every one of us. He is unleashing us to transform the world. Hallelujah. We are in his divine plan. When we look at Christianity around the world. Let's go. Look at Christianity around the world. You see that... Christianity about a century ago um, is comparable to what we see now. Although Christianity has increased in number, the world's population has also increased. So if you look at the trend, you do not necessarily see a, 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 a exponential growth. The population of Christians right now are about one third. 
If the population of Christians right now are, are one third, then it calls upon the generation here to stand up. We have to stand up to, to save our generation, the two thirds that are left. Hallelujah. When you go to the next slide. Now, the trend that you see is that Africa is increasing very much in Christianity, whilst the West is dwindling. And so you see very much that uh, many great uh, ministers from Africa are, are renting um, um, arenas like this. Musicians are renting, renting arenas like this and they are possessing the Western world. Now I believe that just as in the past the church, the church or the synagogue was at the center of every city, we, we believe that the church of Pentecost, God is calling us to put back Christ at the center of the architecture of every city. Hallelujah. Nobody said amen on that. Yes, yes. If you look at the churches right now, this is a church, most of you have been to Barcelona before, you know La, La Sagrada. You know, all the churches that are, were the centerpieces of the city. So God was at the center of every city. Cities were built around God. Cities were built around the kingdom of God. Now, most of these cities have been turned to hotels. They've been turned, those of, most of these churches have been turned to hotels, to restaurants, to libraries, uh, museum, and God is going to give us that back. You have to shout a bigger amen with me and believe in me that God is going to give us that back in the name of Jesus. It is not going to take 10 years, but in the next five years, we will see a great shift in the world in the name of Jesus. Now, when we look at the migrant church, there is something in urbanism called selective migration. Selective migration is, is comparable to the Jewish uh, apostle as, as, as Papa has preached on the Jewish roots. Now the Jews, what they would do is when they would come to Oberhauser, they would look for where the Jews are settled and they would settle with them. So if you look at the Church of Pentecost when we started, we built upon the shoulders of our fathers. Because our fathers, some of them will go through the Sahara, they did not have the right means, but then yet still, with the power of the Holy Spirit, they were able to take possession. Amen. Amen. Selective migration is something that limits growth. It limits growth because it becomes a bit, a bit of an inward-looking perspective. Inward-looking perspective. A group of people, do not, they do not break out. God is calling us to allow all people to come in. Amen. When I speak on building up on the fathers, can we go to the next slide? Next two slides, please. Next two slides. Or you can go to the, the slide before quickly. So you see here that because of the locations of our assemblies, there, is, there are a bit of limitations that take place. The first thing is that there is a cap on numerical gro growth. If you take the Ghanaians in the Netherlands, for instance, they are just 22,000. So even if your church is 50%, it's not comparable to the 17 million Dutch population that there is. We need to shift our focus. Amen. The second thing that it does is that um, growth depends only on new migrants coming in. So you see most of our PRWCs depend on intellectuals coming in from Ghana to, to see growth. The third thing is that, yeah, okay, and natural growth as well. <laughs> and growth depends on winning unstable image. So what you see, the trend that you see in most migrant churches, especially even in the Netherlands, is that Growth is dependent on people hopping from one church to the other. We want to limit that. We want to make sure that our, our churches are grounded and that when people come, they stay. We are closing the back door. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the next slide. I want to speak briefly on, on what our fathers have done. Can you go to the next slide? Now, I wouldn't be standing here if it was not for my father, Apostle Abraham Lincoln Ango. Yes, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be standing here if it was my father-in-law is supposed, uh, Pastor uh, Emmanuel Kony. I wouldn't be here if it was not for Elder Owusu Asari. I wouldn't be here if it was not for the likes of our fathers that are sitting right in front of me. Because I watched the documentary of the uh, USA, how the church in USA started. And it turned out that some of the apostles back then, they would take phone books, go through them and call one by one to build. Now the young ones amongst us, Today we are not using phone books. Today we have social media. Today the world is accessible. People are accessible and we have the gospel. We have Jesus Christ. And it's about time for us to rise and spread the gospel. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. 
Now, when we look at the PIWCs, the PIWCs are often characterized by intellectuals or, let's say, adults that are proficient in the language of English. Um, however, the PIWCs, what the PIWCs actually need is to be able to adapt to change. Um, the only certainty in life is change. Change is inevitable. So, as a church, we need to be able to adapt to the times. Amen. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they knew the times. Amen. I pray that you will know the times. I pray that after this conference, you will have the discernment to decide, to discern what God is doing in the moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The PRWs were inward in looking in, 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 in a way. However, God is not calling us to be inward looking. God is calling us to be both inward looking and outward looking, both local and global. God is calling his church to be global in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, let's go. Let's 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 skip, skip that one. Another phenomenon that you see in our churches is the the dynamic between enculturation and enculturation. Um, now I'll quickly read this. In Christianity, enculturation is the adaptation of Christian teachings and and practices to cultures. Enculturation is the process by which an individual adopts the behavior patterns of the culture in which he or she immersed. So what you see in most of our churches, and not just our, our church, but in the body of Christ, the migrant church, is that if a person wants to be part of us, the person has to look like us. But what God is calling us is that we should let everyone come in so that his power will transform them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't go too much about the city. Can we go to the next one? I don't go too much about the city. If you want to know what God is doing concerning the cities, I advise you go and watch our, our father's sermon on winning the cities. If you go and watch that, you, you get a full scope or watch the sermon from yesterday. However, I want to pay attention to this quote. Henry Cox says this, the world has become one immense city. This is through urbanization and so on. And then Roger Greenway says this, the only conclusion the only conclusion we can reach is that at no time in history has it been more true now that he who wins the city wins the world. Is somebody ready to win the city? Oh, you are not here. Are you ready to win the city? Are you ready to win Paris? To win New York? To win, to win, to win Saudi Arabia? To win Dubai? Hallelujah! If you are ready, give Jesus away wherever you are. Amen. How do we win the city? We need to reposition. Because we've been positioned in the peripherals, but we have to come to the center point where we can draw all men. Amen. Amen. Repositioning is very important for maximum impact. Let's go to the next slide because of my time. Can we go to the next slide, please? The next one. Yeah, so reposition. When we talk about repositioning... I look at it as a, as a shopping center. Christianity is like a shopping mall. Um, it is a house with mansions or a house with rooms. So a shopping center like uh, Westwood Mall of the Netherlands or Central Oberhauser has a Zara in there. Now Zara just as Primark or any other sh shop has, sells white t-shirts. The biggest question that you need to ask yourself is that why do majority of the people buy Zara? And why do some people not buy uh, Primark? Likewise, in the Church of Pentecost, there, there are so many churches in, in the message of winning the cities, you realize that in the city, it does not matter where the church is. People are willing to drive two hours to come to church. We have members from Germany that come to church in Amsterdam. So, so people are willing to do that. For you to stand out, for you to experience Acts chapter 2, the last verse where God says he's adding, he, he's adding to the church those that are being saved. For us to see that, we need to be well positioned. We should be concerned about what is happening outside and we should be concerned about what is happening inside. Amen. At Amsterdam City Church, what we do every time is that the, the whole congregation, the whole team is tailored to as a, as seeing the church as a um, complementary card. Anyone that comes in, we are working tirelessly to make sure that they get our product. And we have the greatest product that there is. And that greatest product is called Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you, let's be conscious of what we do in our service. We go out, we bring them, we disciple them, and we throw them back in to bring other people. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let's go quickly to the city church concept and I'll round off. Let me go to the next slide, if you will. Now, when we look at the city church concept, um, as our chairman talks about, um, there are a few strategies or drivers that we, we, we use. And the first one is that it's multi, multiracial, multinational, multicultural, and, and it is well positioned. The second thing, or let's say the more paramount thing, is that prayer is the work, and the work is hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to, you want to create, a, 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 create a, a, an environment that is permeable, an environment that is conducive for all types of people. Um, also, you want to disassemble traditionalism. Christianity is not tradition. Christianity is spirit and life. Amen. Amen. You want to integrate different ethnicities by providing a specific typology of word. What we did at City Church is that we took the chairman's concept of Gospel Sundays. We did not make it an occasional uh, gesture, but we have made it our daily practice. Every Sunday is a Gospel Sunday. Every Sunday, someone has to be saved. And to the glory of God, I think the only time I've ever seen has have a church service for the past three years since we started the first city church uh, that we did not win a soul was one and the highest we have won on a normal given sunday or give glory to jesus the, the louder you clap and shout the more you see that in your church amen amen in fact, in fact, during our Easter convention, and I sent this to our father, during our Easter convention, I spoke on a word um, that our father preached re uh, recently, or I think three years ago or some time ago. And I spoke on the word that remember Jesus. And on that day, come and see souls. Souls trooping in. On, we could not fit them on the floor. We had to bring all of them to the platform. And you could see mother and son crying. It, it is amazing. This is the greatest gift this is the greatest miracle. I pray that we will continue to see this fire. We will continue see, to see this flow. The wells have been stirred up. And out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. In the name of Jesus, shout a big amen. Amen. Strategies. Some of the strategies that we use. Let's go to the next one, please. You can skip this one. Let's go to the next one. Some of the strategies that we use. The Gospel Sunday I've told you about. Other strategies that we use is that we have the Gospel Unplugged. So at City Church, we do not wait for Evangelism Week. It is part of our DNA. Every month we go, to, we go out, we go and evangelize, we go and spread the Gospel. Um, we do that through music and through the Word. You sing, you attract people through the praises of God, and then you give them the Word of Life. Hallelujah. Preaching and teaching. We have... We have several classes. We have um, our purpose, path to purpose class, which is for the new convert. And therefore, immediately and at the end of your path to purpose, you should have been baptized or you, are, you, or you are yet to be baptized. Every month, we have baptism of about 30 people. 30 people being baptized. Hallelujah. God is making his church, God is making his church a salvation factory. God is making his church a salvation factory where he's processing his people and unleashing them to transform the world. Amen. When we come to the children's church, every single month, one of the children is brought up here. So like a conference like this, a child will come here and give us a word in one, deliver a word. And you would see parents crying and, and people being touched and being challenged also to grow in the word. Also, we give music classes monthly through our elder Thomas. I don't know where he is. Uh, the Thomas over there. So every month we give music classes, and this is also a way to create competitive edge um, so that people will bring their children and then the parents will stay. Um, outreach. What can I say about outreach? From young men going to the prisons to play football with prisoners so that they will come back to church when they go out, or visiting old people's home. There is a beautiful, this woman that you see on the screen. So this woman that you see on the screen, the first time we met her, she was just around 90 years. And then she said that, I pray that on my birthday, a year from this time, you will come and come and sing on my birthday. And we went there. And to the glory of God, when we, when we engaged there, on that particular day, she gave her life to Christ. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
media. Uh, Elder Justice and the crew here, you've seen some of their works, what they do. Media is very, we are living in a media world. So you cannot, who, who lights up, who, 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 who lights up a lamp and places it under a basket? You, we need to let the world know that we are here. Amen. And therefore, I want us to, to give it up for our Father for bringing all of us here in such a grand manner. Yes. We, we, are, not, we are not hiding. We are not hiding. We are taking over in the name of Jesus. Repetition. Yes, faith comes by hearing and, the, and hearing by the word of God. We need to repeat, 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 repeat until the seed has been embedded. Amen. Amen. Another thing is yeah, prayer, praise and worship. Very good. Let's give it up for Dignes Claudia, who is doing very well with praise and worship. Yes. Excellence. The Holy Spirit is an ex is excellent spirit. So excellence is crucial in our services. Fellowship, very important. Uh, follow up um, and also adaptability, which I've spoken about already. Um, and then the last one is accountability. Every month, there is team meetings from every individual team and then also we have general team meetings to just look at our budget when i say budget i'm not talking about our ties but we are talking about the number of souls that have won the number of souls that are growing we we look at those that are falling back and we we aggressively go after them to bring them back into the fold amen amen i'm rounding off um so these are a few of the teams uh that we have in in, in the church um, and, and it keeps growing. We are trying to be all people, all things to all people. So whatever there is a need, we want to address. Amen. Amen. You can go to the next one. Yes. So last year, in 2023, by the leadership of our national head, we were able to win 702 souls. I thought you would give Jesus a bigger shout. I thought you would give Jesus a much, 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 much bigger shout. God is working in his church. Tell your neighbor, Jesus works. Hallelujah. To round off, in conclusion, let's look at a few statistics. So Amsterdam City Church now has about 700 members. I'm looking at presiding elder junior if I'm, I have the numbers correct. 700 members, can you give it up for Jesus? Yes. So in three years, Amsterdam City Church, 700 members. Uh, in just about, is it one and a half years? Harbour City Church now has 300 members. Yes. You can see the young man over there, Dickin Flavio. Flavio, come. Now, now, Flavio, Flavio gave his life in the Church of Pentecost to Jesus. And today he is a deacon. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nijmegen City Church, it boasts around 100 uh, members. And Alkma City Church that we just started just last month, last month has 50 members. Amen. Amen. Now, during the last, last uh, one of the last um, seminars or one of the last conferences by our, our father, he was speaking on how Paul would say that we need to be all things or all people to all people. And um, God spoke to me or laid into my heart that we had a lot of footballers that will come to church maybe once a month or you see them two times in a month and then we decided that hey we need to create a platform so that the footballers can experience jesus christ on a daily basis so right now we have started what we call the footballers and athletes church services hallelujah yes and it is growing well there is actually one of the footballers here. I don't know if he's here. And uh, one of our members here who is a footballer, he just recently got signed. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in this church. Um, so, Papa, if I may just for two minutes, there's a young lady here that I want her to share her testimony. I, I think I saw her somewhere here. Rinska. So, Rinska. Yes. Rinska, Rinska came all the way to Pentecost 2024 from Bali. Yes, she booked the ticket just to be here. Hallelujah. And Rinska comes from, comes from a long way, and I wanted to tell you a bit of her, her journey within a minute. I don't know if it's going to take a minute, though. <laughs> Praise God. So, Pastor John asked me to explain a little bit about my testimony. Um, I hope I can keep it short, but uh, I was raised, uh, raised in a family 
which were Christians, but when I was 18, I left the church. I moved to Bali, and I wanted to explore a new age spirituality, and I wanted to find out the truth, the truth of life, the truth why I was existing on this earth. And I was seeking in the wrong places, and that's what I found out last year. And I think my testimony and my whole journey for exploring God is now helping other people to help them understand that the truth can only be found in Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I was quite shocked to see in Bali how people were seeking for truth and how their souls were so uh, yearning for Christ, but they didn't know where to, to find it. They go to these Kundalini practices, uh, they use tarot cards for meaning, they go to healers, and I was, a, I was trained to be a healer myself too, to help people. Um, it's called Reiki. I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but it's kind of quite a scary practice if you really think about it. Um, and during these sessions, I've encountered the spiritual world. My, my soul was traveling and I was just yearning for God, but I didn't know. I thought I could find God in those places where people are seeking right now. And last year I was saved by Christ. <laughs> Um, as a child, I had many anxiety attacks. Um, that's also the reason why I went to Bali. I had suicidal thoughts and that actually never left. And yeah, Jesus just took it all away from me last year. I had an encounter with him and he just took it all away. And I just want to say that you can give all your burdens to Jesus because he wants to take it from you. And the only thing that he told me was, I just want you to look forward. I don't want you to look backwards. That's what Jesus asked, leave your past behind and just trust him for a better future. And that's something that he learned me and I could fully trust, I can fully trust him now. And my life is so much more peaceful and I, you know, I get it. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, when I had this encounter last year uh, with Jesus, I actually said, I, I had a prayer. I was laying in my bed and I was weeping for a couple of hours. And I was like, God, I've... I've experienced so much hurt. I'm seeking for truth. I want to heal myself, but I can't get to that point. And I prayed to Allah, Buddha, Jesus, whoever was out there, because I was so desperate. And I came to a point where I was like, Jesus, I, or like somebody out there, I want to take my life. If you won't intervene tonight, I won't be there tomorrow. And then Jesus showed up in my dream. And, <laughs> and then the next day, and then the next day he told me, I want you to find a church where you can root yourself and have fellowship. And I was like, God, like, how can I find a church in the Netherlands that I feel drawn to? Because I love the English Germans, the worship, the gospel. And I was like, how can I, how can I find such a thing in the Netherlands? And then for the, I maybe 10th time on Instagram, I was like, Amsterdam Church. And then Amsterdam City Church showed up. And I was just five minutes from my home. <laughs> And when I was in the church, my spirit spoke to me and he was like, this is the truth that you are looking for. Jesus Christ is the truth that you are looking for. And it's the only truth that you're going to look for. So if you're still seeking in places, I just want you to call upon the name of Jesus because he will save. He will save. Anyone who's in your environment that is not saved yet, I was saved. And I was so deceived by the enemy because the enemy is using new age to deceive this generation. So I think it's also good to, for us to speak up, for, to share our testimonies so we can plant that seed, so we can bring them to Christ. Because Christ is the Savior, we are not. Christ is the only Savior. Praise God. Thank you.